On YouTube, there is a very popular anti-Mormon YouTuber named Exmo Lex, who recently released a video announcing that she had discovered since leaving the church that she actually is bisexual. This video is me coming out as bi. And yeah, my husband and I have been together for 10 years, and for most of that, I didn't know that I was bisexual. What struck me as odd is that Lex in the video admits that she never really knew she was bisexual until she started spending more time on social media. <sighs> okay, I wanna calm down a little bit because I wanna tell you guys more about how um, I really started figuring out that I was attracted to women. Um, and it's not, it shouldn't be a sad story. So as you guys know, um, I'm in a very happy, committed, straight relationship and I hadn't explored that part of myself at all. Um, and then you guys all encouraged me to get a TikTok. And I know it's going to sound like so cliche and silly because there's a lot of TikTok jokes about, um, you know, TikTok turning women into lesbians. I had seen some of that, um, but as I was on TikTok and I started seeing a lot of videos also about like, you know, people would make these videos that were just really meant to be silly and fun, but they would say things like, what your favorite movie character says about you, um, or what the type of glasses you wear says about you, or your favorite drink at Starbucks, like all those kinds of things. And um, I would watch them, and I started noticing a pattern really early on. Um, every single time I watched one of those videos and I was waiting for like my thing, they'd be like, you're bisexual. And <laughs> that made me laugh, because like, well, I'm not. Um, and I'm not saying that like, I believe those things like really mean that you're bisexual. It just was the first time that I ever like, it ha happened so many times that I finally like questioned a little bit and realized like, you know what? I'm seeing like a lot of really beautiful women on my, um, my timeline here. And um, so suddenly she finds herself online where it is being suggested to her that she might be bisexual. And so instead of her same sex attractions arising naturally, they seem to arise only after she explores and questions her lifelong heterosexuality. That's when I started to think about it more. I didn't think that I am bisexual because, you know, these random little things make me bisexual. But it did make me think like, what if I am though? Like, what if I was? Um, I've never ever considered that before. So she never had considered that she may have had same-sex attraction until social pressures in society, especially on social media, began suggesting it to her. This is actually really fascinating, and it seems to correlate well with the very real phenomena of social contagion around the explosion in LGBTQIA plus identification. Um, and what I wanna to talk to you about today are two things, behavioral contagions and causality. And so what I do is I, ma I mine massive social network data to understand how behavioral contagions spread in human social networks, how peers influence one another to do things like quit smoking or buy a certain product or vote for a different political candidate. And so uh, Slate ran an article that was titled, Everything is Contagious, okay? It's not just about obesity. Apparently, happiness is contagious and product adoption is contagious and cooperation is contagious and loneliness is contagious, but it's also not just about birds of a feather. There are many alternative explanations that can explain these correlations, like friends might be exposed to the same external stimuli or have a greater probability. Figures from the UK show a startling picture. Fewer than 100 children were referred to the specialist service there in 2010. But by last year, the number of under 15s had grown by almost 1400%. And there's a big change in who's coming forward too. While before it used to be boys wanting to become girls, now it's almost twice the number of girls wanting to become boys. This is Elliot Darrow at 23 years old, He's a Generation Z trans man. He tells me he realized his true identity when he started college. I lost a few people and some people had to warm up to the idea and others were just, oh, you're Elliot now and that's okay, you're still the same person. Elliot is a part of a generation that is more likely than any other to self-identify as being LGBT. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, education. Well, there are, I suppose, two fundamental 
types of explanation. The first is that now we are recognizing something that has always existed. So we are now seeing the genuine numbers, if you like. So the more there are of them, the more genuine the numbers. Uh, but there's also another possible explanation, which I think is more realistic, is that if you like, it's more like something of a social epidemic. The more publicity is given to it, the more people are turned into victim heroes, and victims are our heroes today, uh, then there's more interest in the whole, the whole um, phenomenon. Um, and so it was kind of from there where I just let myself like question and let myself think about it um, in a way that I never had before. Um, and over the next several months to a year, um, I, I let myself question that. Um, it was after like a lot of introspection and a lot of thinking about it, um, I finally reached the point where I realized that yes, I actually am attracted to women the same that I'm attracted to men and it's something that I've never even considered until I was kind of able to break away from the church's heteronormative viewpoints. We know that the way young women, and there are psychologists who've done wonderful work in this area, Amanda Rose is, is one of the University of Missouri, uh, who I interviewed, um, they, teenage girls tend to spread these psychic epidemics because they are very, their modes of friendship involve co-rumination, taking on their friend's pain. One of the reasons that I wanted to speak about it publicly is because if anybody else has struggled with these sorts of things, I want to know about it. They like to rehash their own pain and they like to take on their friend's pain. And they are even willing to suspend reality in order to sort of get on the team of their friend. If you look at the anorexia, it afflicts one population. If you look at bulimia, it afflicts one population and it grows and it spreads among friend groups, just as this does. So what are we to make of this? I have no doubt that many people are indeed born with serious and potentially insurmountable proclivities towards same-sex attraction. But is that the case here? How common is this? Some of the stats I recently read on this are shocking. And when the researchers broke out uh, the youngest of the group, ages 18 to 24, which is really Gen Z, they found 39% call themselves LGBTQ. Okay, so we're talking 40%, nearly 40% identifying as LGBT. Now, if this is true, if these numbers are anywhere close to accurate, then we are witnessing not even just a seismic shift in human sexuality, but a full-on transformation unlike anything the world has ever seen before. Even at BYU, a stunning 13% of students are now identifying as LGBT. Again, I have no doubt that there are some people who are born with serious proclivities towards members of the same sex that they didn't choose. But is there also a social phenomena going on today where people stand to gain followers and accolades by identifying as LGBTQIA+. Um, if there's anybody else who grew up as a woman in the church and feels like their opinions and views about women were affected by the church's teachings, I want to know about it. So um, if any of you felt this way, I would love if you left a comment letting me know about it. I mean, in today's age of social media fandom, is it not possible to turn a victim status into a business? And special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are the best. Extra special thank you to AA, Craig Call, Doug Davis, Mormonland, The Guiltiest Place on Earth, Jason Wilkins, Noble Monster Comics, Tans, and the Exmo Candle Company for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. Bye!